We lost the quiet musical genius Walter Becker a few years back, but his partner Donald Fagan is carrying on the Steely Dan torch with the release of the band's first live album in 25 years. At the same time, a live recording of Fagan's magnificent solo album, The Nightfly, is also available for us. And I have the privilege of unboxing both Northeast Corridor, Steely Dan's live uh, two LP package, and Donald Fagan's The Nightfly Live. With the stories behind some of these classics, including Hey 19, it's coming up next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Make sure that you subscribe below right now to be a part of our Music History Daily, stories of the songs straight from the artists, and make sure to check out our exclusive content on Patreon by clicking on the link in the description. You can also see our new merch at the link below. Both of these things help us keep this a daily channel. I was elated when I heard the news that Steely Dan was going to release their first live album in 25 years. It's even more fired up when I found out the album was going to be available on 180 gram vinyl. All of my friends in the POR community know how much I love music on vinyl. Uh, Northeast Corridor, Steely Dan Live, it was recorded across tour dates at New York City's Beacon Theater, the Met in Philadelphia, and other locations. Now, I'm going to unbox this, but also tell a few stories from several of uh, Steely Dan and Donald Fagan's solo gems. Now, the album showcases selections from Steely Dan's extraordinary catalog of jazzy grooves, stimulating subversive lyrics, and infectious world-class musicianship, just like a studio recording of a Steely Dan record. Northeast Corridor has uh, excellent, excellent sound quality. Northeast Corridor, this is Steely Dan live, including live versions of many of the band's greatest hits. There's Reeling in the Years. Are you reeling? Peg. Peg, it will come back to you. Peg. And their highest charting single ever, Ricky Don't Lose That Number. Ricky Don't Lose That Number. You don't want to call nobody else. You can always rely on Steely Dan to feature the best of the best when it comes to live players. Northeast Corridor doesn't disappoint in that category. There's Keith Carlock on drums, uh, Freddie Washington slapping the bass, John Harrington sharing keyboards with Donald Fagan, Connor Kennedy stepping in for the great Walter Becker on rhythm guitar. Plus you have the wonderful addition of LaTanya R. Hall joining Catherine Russell along with Carolyn and Jamie Leonhardt on vocals. Like a fine wine, Donald Fagan's voice, to me it's aged impeccably. This may sound a little absurd, but I honestly think Donald Fagan sounds better now than he did back then in his so-called prime. It's kind of like Sinatra later in his career. Angels in the night, two lonely people. Somewhere over the last 25 years, Fagan's vocal style has developed a, just a robust maturity. There's a steamy luster to his voice that livens up these old songs with uh, fresh passion. It's a quality you don't often hear on many live recordings. To me, Fagan sounds especially cool on Kid Charlemagne. Could you feel your wood fall apart and fade away? Get along. Get along. Get black cow. Drink your big black cow. Get out of here. And of course, Hey 19. Hey 19 was the lead single from Steely Dan's Gaucho, uh, that gorgeously crafted album that was released in 1980. Tied with Peg and uh, Ricky Don't Lose That Number as the longest running chart hit for Steely Dan, Hey 19 was on the Hot 100 for 19 weeks. Hey 19, no we the single rose to number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 and went to number three in Canada, I believe. Uh, Fagan played the electric piano and synthesizer on Hey 19, strutting his uh, multi-instrumental talent. Along with his distinctive vocal and always engaging lyricism. Dandy, yeah, 
Roger Nichols, uh, the man who engineered Gaucho, assembled a drum machine that they nicknamed Wendell to use on Hey 19. The machine was one of the first of its type at that time, with the main utility to record Rick Murata's drum parts and play them back with absolute precision. Which is always a hallmark of all Steely Dan's recordings. Hey 19 is it's one of the most charming Steely Dan tunes. The song is, of course, autobiographical, with Fagan carefully revealing excerpts from a real-life encounter. As usual, he doesn't fully uh, reenact what inspired the song, but Hey 19 should be self-explanatory. Uh, devoid of scorn and subversion, Hey 19 is really a story about two people that are attracted to each other despite uh, pretty healthy a generation gap. The older man discovers that uh, they have nothing in common, including their musical tastes. When he says, hey, 19, that's Aretha Franklin. She don't remember the queen of soul. It's hard times befallen the soul survivors. She thinks I'm crazy, but I'm just growing old. I love that. Boy, if that guy felt old in the song then, he must really feel old now. The song was released over 40 years ago. But of course, age was not a factor when the Cuervo gold began to flow and the night became a wonderful thing. Make a wonderful thing. So it's double our pleasure with two exceptional live recordings being released at the same time. In addition to Northeast Corridor, a Steely Dan Live, we can now enjoy a live version Donald Fagan's highly acclaimed solo LP, The Night Flight. First time this has ever been available live. All eight tracks from the album are performed live by the Steely Dan Band from a special tour date in 2019. Also available on 180 gram black vinyl. The Night Flight studio album, that was recorded in 82 when Fagan and Becker took a much needed break from Steely Dan after Gaucho was released. A majority of the songs that Fagan wrote for the Nightfly reflects back to uh, his optimism of the world during his suburban childhood in the 50s and early 60s. With jazz and conversation. Donald Fagan shares fond memories of listening to late night jazz DJs, uh, tropical vacations, and fallout shelters that were part of the duck and cover drills taught in schools while America lived in fear of the threat of uh, nuclear war. It's just a the Steely Dan albums leading up to Fagan's departure from the band are so good. The brilliance of the Nightfly, it's often overlooked, even though it was the first solo record by one of the two architects of Steely Dan. As many probably remember, uh, the Nightfly was an early example of a fully digital recording in popular music. Uh, the nascent technology, as well as the perfectionist nature of Donald Fagan, uh, the musicians he hired, and the pros that engineered in the studio made the album uh, very difficult to record over eight long months at various studios between LA and New York City. Even though previous Steely Dan projects were often recorded live, Fagan overdubbed each part separate for the Nightfly, adding to the taxing efforts to finish the record. So many people were influenced by this record in the 80s. I mean, Howard Jones uh, covered a song from it. Although the lyrics for the songs on the Nightfly came very easily for Donald Fagan, he did admit that he struggled without the instinctive camaraderie of his longtime musical partner, Walter Becker. That's very, very difficult now. There's also the fact that the crew had to overcome problems in the early Nightfly sessions with aligning 3M's new 32 track and uh, the older four track recorders with tech representatives of 3M actually called in to try to fix the problem. Again, when technology was young. The lead track of the Nightfly studio LP and the Nightfly live album is Fagan's debut solo single, IGY, What a Beautiful World. The Nightfly Live features a live version of IGY, What a Beautiful World, recorded from a performance at New York City's Beacon Theater. A 
IGY is it's actually an acronym for International Geophysical Year that ran from July uh, 1957 to December 1958. The IGY was an international scientific movement promoting collaboration among scientists around the world. That it's clear. The future looks bright. I gotta tell you, I've always felt like I needed a dictionary next to me. Whenever I listen to anything from Steely Dan or Donald Fagan, uh, as I started to discover them in my late teens, early 20s, uh, I mean, these guys are just so brilliant. You be Seriously, your IQ goes up from listening to Steely Dan. I think it's true. So back to Donald Fagan's solo, Jim IGY, What a Beautiful World. This is such an exceptional song. With IGY, there is a clever blend of irony, of course, and innocence. What a glorious time to be free. Fagan's lyrics on IGY sarcastically address the widespread optimistic vision of the future in the late 50s, including futuristic concepts such as solar-powered cities, in the city, I would buy the a transatlantic tunnel, permanent space stations, and uh, spandex jackets. IGY criticizes this vision and offers a humorous critique on the naivete of uh, post-war optimism in America and the Western world over an irresistibly bouncy melody that gives you a comforting feeling, kind of like a, you're watching an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The 76 referred to in the second verse of IGY is 1976, the U.S. Bicentennial Year. Also the year I was born. As clean and exquisite as Donald Fagan is with his art, there were a few bizarre incidents that occurred during the recording sessions for the Nightfly uh, LP that proves even the purists face the uncertainty of Murphy's Law. Check this out. Larry Carlton, one of the all-time most revered studio musicians, was hired to play on the Nightfly, and during one of the four days that he performed his parts for the record, uh, he kept hearing a humming noise coming from his amplifier. Larry kept bringing it to the engineer's attention, and finally they discovered the source of the problem was a large magnet just outside of the building that formed part of the New York subway system. It's crazy. The magnet was causing interference, I guess, with the electronic feeds in the studio. Now, during another session in the Big Apple, uh, a rancid smell began to diffuse throughout the studio space at uh, Soundworks it was recorded. The studio staff gutted the entire studio. They removed the air conditioning unit to the carpeting, recording console, and then they discovered that the foul odor was coming from a dead rat that had died in a drain pipe connected to the studio's plumbing system. Crazy. Ultimately, issues were cleaned up, and the Nightfly album was completed and released to tremendous commercial and critical success. Achieving certified platinum status in both the U.S. and the U.K. It was also uh, nominated for seven Grammy Awards in 1983, including Album of the Year in one of the most competitive years for that category in the entire 80s. I mean, you think about the nominees for Album of the Year in that year. You had Fagan with The Night Fly. You also had Sir Paul McCartney for Tug of War. Uh, there was John Mellencamp for American Fool. Uh, oh, Billy Joel for the Nylon Curtain, which is actually in a three-way tie for my personal favorite album of all time. And then the winner that year was Toto 4. I mean, incredible. Listening to the hypnotic musicianship on Northeast Corridor, Steely Dan Live, and then Donald Fagan's The Night Fly Live, it makes me want to get together, you know, with close friends for an evening of dinner, drinks, and great live music. I just get that overwhelming urge to share the exuberance of listening to both of these collections with people that I enjoy hanging out with, talking about music, and appreciating a fulfilling audiophile experience. So let's take a quick listen and highlight the track list. So on Northeast Corridor, it's a two record set. On side one, you have Black Cow. Just when it seems so clear, then it's over. 
And then you have Kid Charlemagne, that's live from the Orpheum Theater. And then you have Ricky Don't Lose That Number, 70s hit. Ricky Don't Lose That Number. Side two starts out with the aforementioned Hey 19. Where the hell am I? No, we can't dance together. And then one of my all-time favorite Steely Dan songs ever, Any Major Dude will tell you. No more, any major dude will tell you. Just incredible, it's got me through a lot of hard times. And then the Gaucho deep track, Glamour Profession. I thought that was cool that they added that. And then side three, starting off, uh, you have Things I Miss the Most, which may be a tip of the hat to Fagan's late musical partner, Walter Becker. These are the things Then it's the title track from Asia. Asia when all my dying dancing is through, I want to Ending with the spectacular version of Peg, live from the Orpheum Theater. A lot of hits Sabata from their album Countdown to Ecstasy. Fagan has called the song, uh, this particular song, a parody on the way uh, Western people look at Eastern religion, uh, sort of oversimplifying it. He said he and Walter Becker thought that the song was rather amusing, but that most people really didn't get it. Then it's on to a really lively version of Reeling in the Years. Ending with a truly moving version of Joe Williams' jazz blues classic, A Man Ain't Supposed to Cry. As Fagan played Steely Dan shows without his partner in crime, Walter Becker, I guess he would often say before walking off the stage, thank you very much. I'd also like to thank my partner, Walter Becker, who couldn't be here tonight. Of course, classic Donald Fagan there. And of course, on Donald Fagan's The Nightfly Live, he plays the album straight through, which is a rare treat. Check out a couple of uh, cuts from this. Northeast Corridor, Steely Dan Live, and Donald Fagan's The Nightfly Live are truly excellent soundtracks to create that uh, kind of stimulating atmosphere. Get both, you know, Northeast Corridor right here, uh, the double LP and Donald Fagan's The Nightfly Live by clicking on the link for the Professor of Rock community. Make sure to leave us a comment on Steely Dan, Donald Fagan, some of the classic songs we've talked about here. What are your memories of these songs? Let us know in the comments. Again, make sure to pick up a copy of both of these records. Link is right below. You're really gonna dig this. This is great. Check us out on Patreon, also our merch. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. <laughs> <laughs>